The internet has always been a bit of a minefield when it comes to finding correct information from reliable sources and reputable people. So this time on the future of tech, I'm not going to make that task much easier. As we look into the deep neural networks, machine learning and devious minds that concoct deep fakes. This technology takes one person's face and replaces it with another in an image or a video. This is the future of tech, the show that puts on a new face in every episode to pretend our host is way more knowledgeable than real life would suggest. While the word deepfake sounds mysterious and straight out of a spy novel, what does it actually mean? The word is made up by combining deep learning and fake. With deepfake, you can switch any footage of a person's face with another person's face. Deepfake isn't only about manipulating video though. There are also examples of audio fakes where you can create any sentence said in a specific person's voice. For example, I could make my colleague Scott say that Lars is the coolest guy in the world. Which of course would be true, cause it is, but don't question it. While deepfakes are kind of fun and impressive, what are some of the real use cases for them? Let's start with the most obvious that you may have seen, manipulating video footage. Often this is seen with something silly like a celebrity face swap or putting one person's voice on someone else's face, but it goes much further than that. You can also bring back actors from the dead if a sequel to a popular sci-fi franchise, for example, needed to use those actors again. Museums are looking at bringing back to life historic characters such as David Crockett, John F. Kennedy, or even Gandhi. Having historic events recreated with the real people and voices would enhance the learning experience dramatically. A clinic in Boston in the US, in conjunction with uh, Northeastern University, is recreating voices for people that have lost their own. This pioneering project can give people an important part of their identity back, which is really cool. Of course, it isn't only the good guys that get hold of amazing technology. In one instance, a UK energy company's chief executive was tricked into wiring 200,000 euros to a Hungarian supply because he believed his boss was instructing him to do so. Now let my esteemed colleague Scott take it from here. Or not. Imagine you could make any politician say anything you want. A famous example is of Barack Obama saying things he would never say. Well, at least not in public. It was done by a comedian, Jordan Peele, who mimicked his voice. Deep fake technology then applied Obama's face. And voila. A more subtle example is Indian politician Manoj Tiwari, who used deep fake to make himself appear to speak fluently in the dialect of his target voters. Now, does that mean we can't trust what politicians are saying anymore? Oh, wait. Never mind. The real threat is the use of this technology to spread disinformation. To explain more, here is my colleague Scott. Okay then. The ethical implications and considerations for a technology like deepfake are vast. Imagine this, a criminal is charged with a crime. The criminal's defense, they find a video from some surveillance footage from a place in a completely different city. The footage is then put through a deep fake process to put the criminal's face and person into the footage. Ta-da, alibi done. Or what if phone calls could be manufactured with the exact voice print of a different person? That could lead to identity theft, fraud, and so much more. So how does the technology work and can we in fact harness it? The technology behind deep fakes is a sub-discipline of machine learning known as deep learning. Deep learning uses something called neural networks, a design that was inspired by how our own brain cells work. To create a deep fake, we need to teach our neural network how to create something completely new. 
We can do this through a process called training, which involves feeding in lots and lots of examples of the thing we want to ultimately recreate. Now, after much time and number crunching, our training process will provide us with a set of instructions for how to create that new thing. It's this thing that we call our model. Now, this model is ultimately used to generate entirely new videos, pictures, or audio based on the examples that we provided. So how long does the training process take? Well, models can take anywhere from 12 hours to 12 weeks or more, depending on the quality and quantity of examples, the complexity of the subjects, the computing power you have available, and how much money you're willing to throw at the problem. The example of Lars and myself used in this episode are snapshots of our model over a 24-hour training period. Now, if you want to know more about machine learning and deep neural networks, check out the episode of Future of Tech on machine learning. Now, as we've seen, deep fakes hold the potential to cast doubt on the legitimacy of any form of digital media. So how in the world are we to believe anything anymore? Last year, a consortium of over 100 tech companies, including AWS, Facebook, and Microsoft, created something called a deep fake detection challenge, offering $1 million in prizes for anybody able to create an effective way to detect deep fakes. Now, another idea that's being kicked around is some form of digital watermark issued and stored using a blockchain. When the digital asset is created, it's assigned a unique ID that's a sort of fingerprint generated from the original. This could then be used to verify the authenticity of that asset later or uncover fakes. Oh, what's blockchain? Well, this show has an episode for explaining that too. Well, thanks for that, Scotty boy. My expectation is that there will be two mainstreams of future deepfake tech. One side will be enhancing the use and believability of it. The other will be detecting what is a deepfake and what isn't. Both will be equally important. Want to contribute on the debate of deepfakes? Start the conversation in the forum for the show. Link is in the description. And you can of course find me on Twitter at Lars Clint or through the Acloud Guru Facebook page and other social media channels. This has been The Future of Tech, a show being made entirely inside Scott's farm of EC2 instances.